I bring you a testament of hate, of flame, of light. My brothers, my children, beware. Beware of satisfaction. Beware of the government men who will promise you a bright tomorrow. And while those visions are hot in your mind, they will shackle your soul to a mortgage. Life is a struggle. First with yourself, and second with the corruptors. You must win that first struggle with yourself. You must. You must then fight greed and stupidity and corruption. I give you a truth more precious than you can ever touch. He sounds like you. Nobody listens to me either. I give you a truth that you can hold in your heart. Listen. An old man is speaking. out in the park again. Now, don't you realize what that does to me? Don't you realize what that does to our business? Last Monday, Harry O'Neill walked in the store laughing his head off. He heard your father on the steps of the church. He was trying to get the people to burn it. If he wasn't my father-in-law, he'd be in jail now. Now, I'm telling you, Karen, I want him out of the house. He's my father. He is a lunatic. Doctor, he's my father. I can't just throw him out in the street. Have you thought about putting him into a home? Yeah, I've thought about it, but we can't afford it. It doesn't have to be that expensive, you know? No? I know a very nice home. It's only $400 a month. $400? But that's impossible. Martin wouldn't pay that. He couldn't. He wouldn't have to. He wouldn't have to? It's also a private hospital, Mrs. Medlin. Your medical insurance could cover that. But there's nothing wrong with my father. Well, only you and I know that, Mrs. Medlin. The home is very discreet. Is it a really good place? Will they treat him well? There's a very long waiting list. Can I think about it? <laughs> What was all that? I don't know. Maybe he's not a music lover. <laughs> Do you think what he did was normal? Scaring those children half to death? It was so funny. All he did was stare at us. Funny? God knows what he'll do next. I'm telling you, Karen, he's got to go, and I mean it. What are you going to do? I'm going to call Dr. Granger and make the arrangements. Daddy, can I have Grandpa's room? What is your medical insurance number, Mrs. Medland? $7,000. 
Now, does your father have any dietary restrictions? I mean, his beard. Oh, no, no. And uh, what is your father's religion? He, he's an atheist. I see. Uh, and what is your religion? We're Lutheran. Then uh, put down Lutheran for your father. Is that all right? I suppose. This is Miss Strong, Mr. Mueller. How do you do? She's your nurse. Would you go with her, please? Would you follow me, please? I thought he was going to have a room to himself. Private rooms are more expensive. How much? Lady, don't worry about it. It's all right, this room. It's bigger than a grave. Want a cookie? Listen, it's like that for everybody the first night. You'll get used to it. What's your name? Let me tell you something. We're all you've got now. The five men in this room. In a little while, you'll be lucky if your relatives come to visit you once a month. Later, not even that often. <laughs> if they're like my children, you'll be lucky if they don't come at all. What kind of place is this? What kind of place? It's like a waiting room for the next world. What's your name? My name is Miller. Frederick Miller. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Miller. My name is Max. Max. <coughs> what? Max. What is it? Nurse. 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 He just started to choke. I was talking to him and he just started to choke. Is he going to die? Go to sleep, Mr. Mueller. The rest of you lie down and go to sleep. There's nothing you can do. Max! Max! What's your last name? Max. Dr. Granger, please. Oh, wait a minute. May I have that number again, please? Max. Nurse. Nurse! Dr. Granger. 
Ranger, please? Thank you. Nurse! Dr. Green? This is really strong. I think you better come over right away. Mr. Wall is very sick. I don't know. It looks like a heart attack. Nurse! Morphine. I can't hear you, doctor. I said give him a quarter grain of morphine. I'll be by in the morning. Good. What about Millie Strong? I'll take care of her. Are you sure? It's a little late now for you to get concerned, isn't it? You just take care of the death certificate. I'll take care of Millie Strong. Mr. Mueller's gone. What do you mean, gone? Have you looked in the garden? I've looked all over, and he's gone. Would you like me to call your daughter? Is there anything I can do? Margaret Marshall at the library. Your father's here. He did what? Well, will you get here right away? I'll keep an eye on him. Thank you. You don't have a picture or anything? No. Do you know what he was wearing? No. We packed most of his things, so he could have been wearing almost anything. Well, the beard will help some, I guess. If we hear anything, I'll let you know. And look, if he calls here, don't try to pressure him. Just find out where he is and call me. Yes, sir. Are you the coroner? That's right. I wish to redress a wrong. was horrible. The eyes were bulging. And the tongue was black, too. And then she gave him the needle, and he died right away. Well, what are you staring at me that way? He was closer to me than you are now. We spoke, and then he died right after the needle. Well, I know what happened. I saw it. Byron, do we have anything on this place? Never even heard of it. I've seen you before. 
in a park on a Sunday making a speech. My wife said you sounded like me. Well, then you know how it feels if no one listens to you. Max Ball was a heart patient, Doctor. He'd been on maintenance doses of digitalis for months, as you can see. The nurse who signed this medication chart, M. Strong. M? Millie. Where is she? Well, we don't know. She didn't show up this morning. There was no answer at her house. We had to phone the registry for a replacement. Could she have given the patient um, an overdose or the wrong drug? Certainly, that's always a possibility. But not Millie Strong. No, she was meticulous. And how long after the nurse called you did you arrive? Within the hour. Mr. Mueller said he didn't see you at all that night. Well, he's right. Uh, Miss Cutler and Miss Strawn removed the body immediately. You can't leave a dead body lying around a room with five old men. I examined the body downstairs in our surgery. And where's the hypo, Miss Cutler? I don't even remember seeing a hypo. Did Mr. Mueller say there was one? Air Canada, flight 803 to Calgary. Now, there's nothing to worry about. You've got enough money to last you for three months now. You should run short Daddy, of the call. Daddy, this is the end. Oh, will you get in there and stop horsey on? I feel I should stay and try to explain. Well, otherwise, they may think I've done something wrong. Millie, trust me in this. I know what I'm talking about. You'll be back in three months and the whole thing will be forgotten. Are you coming aboard, madam? Would you like a, a window seat, Miss Storm? Oh, I don't care. She's gone. Now you've nothing to worry about. point to the fact that the nurse was negligent. <laughs> She's gone. The hypo's gone. Granger and Ellen Cutler are absolute saints. It's, it's not a home for the aged, the way they tell it. It's, a, it's the Garden of Eden. Steve, are you sure that old man isn't conning us? What I mean is, uh, maybe, maybe he invented the story or imagined it. Old people can be pretty funny sometimes. I have sinned by tolerating the myth by tolerating superstition and by ignoring men. In there is where they have invented God, where they have invented the soul. But they have forgotten man. It is we who invented God in our image. He must now destroy that specter that has haunted man since time began. It has to be a new day. A day free of superstitions, free of ghosts, and free of terrors. If we tear away at one brick at a time, one day at a time... Here he is again. Okay, let's take him home. All right. These buildings are their power. Without them, they are nothing. Naked. We will set such a flame that the world will be burned clean. Okay, Mr. Muller, that's enough. See? Can't be destroyed. Follow me, brothers. Brothers, history will thank us. Brothers, I bring you salvation. All you have to do is stretch out your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch out your hand. <laughs>
I bring you the truth. <laughs> Brothers. Please. Listen to me. He wanted to come here. He said you're the only friend he has. Mr. Mueller? Mr. Mueller? All right, leave him with me. I'll look after him. We'll have to call his daughter, you know. She's terribly worried. Is she really? Now well, call her then. Tell her her father's all right. What am I going to do with you, Mr. Miller? Take me home with you. Will you set an extra place for supper? Who suggested this home for your father? Dr. Granger. He said it was a fine place. Wasn't it going to be difficult for you to come up with $400 every month to pay for your father's keep? $400? You said $150. $400, Mr. Medlin, didn't you know? No. Where do you think I'm going to get $400 a month? Why, that's almost a month's profit sometimes. Karen, where were you going to get the extra money? Karen, I'm speaking to you. Where were you going to get it? From the medical insurance. The doctor would send me the bill for the difference. And I would send the bill to the insurance company. And when they sent me the check, I would give it to Dr. Granger. Karen, do you realize what you're doing? Why, that's fraud. It's like stealing. Yes, I know it's like stealing. And I know it's all wrong, but he is my father. And I had no place for him to live. So I threw him out. As if he was all used up and I didn't need him anymore. So I threw him out like an old shoe that couldn't be fixed. Oh, I'm sorry, Martin, I couldn't find a hole to put him in so he wouldn't bother you anymore. But he was still alive. Steve. Steve, come on, darling. Wake up. It's seven o'clock. Mm. Come on. Mm. Hey, Steve. Mm, you smell something? Fresh bread. Sleep well? How long have you been up? Oh, up. Sleep is a waste of life. Do you mind what I've done? I, I didn't break anything. I, I baked your bread. I don't mind at all. Oh, sit down, sit down. The coffee should be just right. But you can't wait on us. Please.
now. Would you like to have ham and mushroom omelette? Or potato pancakes? Eat the bread before it gets cold. <coughs> Apricot preserve is very good with fresh bread. Lots of butter. But which is it? Pancake or omelet? It's an easy decision. <laughs> Mr. Moore, I love you. You been here all night? No, just a couple of hours. I found Millie Strong. You did where? In Calgary. I had a look at her apartment and found some letters to her sister. Check the airlines and bingo. Take a take remembers her and remembers the woman she was with, Ellen Cutler. She said you didn't know where Millie Strong was. There's a couple of other things. Granger isn't just a visiting physician at that home. He owns it. Stoneface is his partner, Cutler. And the other? He sends a receipt of bill to patients' relatives. They send it on to the insurance. The relatives get the uh, check back and sign it over to the doctor. Well, what's so wrong with that? Some doctors work that way. Some don't. For treatment patients don't receive? For drugs they don't get? For diseases that are non-existent? Well, that would be fraud. No. It's the only way some of the relatives can afford to keep their old people, thereby becoming accessories. I see. Arnie, <coughs> this could be a lever. We could use this thing to get the Home for the Age Act changed. But we could get the act to cover every home in the province. We could put some of these monsters out of business. You know what kind of murder these guys are getting away with? Come on, Steve. It's not Sunday. <laughs> for God's sakes, Arnie. Some of those old people are existing on nutritional minimums. Some will die of mistreatment or gross negligence. And the cause of the death is unreported. And it doesn't have to be reported the way the law stands now. Arnie, I'm going to exhume Max Ball's body and have an autopsy performed. I'd like you to bring Millie Strawn back from Calgary. For an inquest? She's our key witness. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring her back if the autopsy shows anything. A deal? What cemetery is the old fellow buried in? It's non-malignant. It's a cystic lipoma. Of course I'm sure. Dr. Minkin, I'd send you a copy of the report, and if you want, I'll send you the slides too, and then you can see for yourself. Minkin's sore because he can't charge as much for the removal of a cyst as he could for a mastectomy. Well, do you agree with my diagnosis? I don't know. I've only seen one slide. Oh, here. Look at them all. Go ahead. Take a look. What's wrong with you this morning? I guess I'm tired. I was up all night making this decision, and the patient is a 20-year-old girl. You want your autopsy report on Max Ball? Here. And if you ask whether I'm sure, Steve Wojcik. I want to speak to Arnold Babin, please. Arnie. I'm fine, Arnie. Yeah, she's fine. Too. Listen, Arnie. I'm with Bruno Lintz at the pathology lab. I've just seen the report. Max Ball did not, repeat, did not die of a heart attack. 
He aspirated on a piece of biscuit. He choked to death. you could think of. You know what? Even doctors came to see her for herbs and medicine. Papa. How do you feel, Papa? Mrs. Wojcik, this is my daughter, Karen. How did you know I was here? The police. No, oh, please don't go. Does Martin know what happened? Yes. What are you going to do, Papa? Do you remember Julius Köhler? The second-hand bookstore. Yes, I know, Papa. On top of the store, there's a spare room. Oh, Papa, please come home. You come and visit me at the store. And now, make tea. talk about things. I planted the vineyards and I made me gardens and parks. And in them I planted trees with all kinds of fruit. And I made me pools of water to water there from the wood bringing up into trees. And then I looked upon all the things that my hands had wrought. And behold, all was vanity. It's striving after the wind. And there was no profit under the sun. Sergeant Byron James. You, Sergeant Pollock? That's right. Is that all your luggage? Yes. Hold on a minute. I've got to get you to sign this receipt for the prisoner. Miss Ron is a witness at an inquest. You mean you brought her all the way back here for an inquest? Oh, then that old man started to scream at me that, that I killed Mr. Ball. And I got frightened. Well, it looked like a heart attack. and That's what Dr. Granger said it was the next morning. That's what he said. It was a heart attack. I don't mean that. You said the next morning. The first time you saw Mr. Ball? I mean, didn't Dr. Granger come over right away? No, not until the next morning. He didn't show up at all that night. No. Well, didn't you think it was strange for him to accept your diagnosis over the phone? And then to prescribe a drug over the phone? And then not, not even to bother to show up? Well, I called Miss Cutler. You called Miss Cutler. How long have you been a nurse? I finished last year. And how many doctors do you know? How many would accept a nurse's diagnosis over the phone? And how safe would you feel with a doctor who prescribed drugs over the phone? My God, you know what you've done? Why are you picking on me? I'm not responsible. You are. That's the whole point. 
That's what this practice of medicine is all about. We are responsible for the lives of the people in our care. We are responsible. Responsible. Damn it, Steve. Do you mean to tell me that you've never given medical advice to a patient over the phone? Stay in bed. Take two aspirins every three hours. Drink plenty of fluids. I'm sure there must be some people who have an allergy to aspirin. I know my patients. If they can't come to my office, I go to their homes. Besides, we're talking about a chronic heart case. You're weaseling, Steve. There is no difference in principle, only in kind. Granger falsified a death certificate. Fine. We'll get them on that. But half the doctors in this city do their business over the phone. You want to uh, take away their licenses also? The point of this is the man's negligence. Granger is criminally negligent. Steve. I'm the lawyer. You're the doctor. Now, let's not get the jobs confused, huh? If there is criminal negligence, we'll get him on that, too. All we can prove now is that he falsified a death certificate. You may think that Granger's medical ethics stink. So, go open a window. I'm gonna open a window, all right. I'm gonna expose this whole filthy mess of unsupervised old folks' homes. Don't you see what I'm after? You're after Granger's scalp because he's a lousy doctor. He's a lousy human being. And I'm gonna run him up like a flag and let him flap. Arnie, we're talking about old people. Some of them alone and defenseless. Usually forgotten. Now somebody's got to take care of them. When's the inquest? Thursday. Okay. I won't charge him until your jury brings in some recommendations. You'll be able to lay half a dozen charges against him. Yes, Mr. Harris. Is Susie here with you? No. What's wrong? Mrs. Beck saw her with that old man. She says he's staying with you. Yes, Mr. Muller. She says he was playing with her. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, my God, I don't know. All I know is she's never been away from the house before. She never has. Oh, come on in. Dr. Woodchick, please. Steve? Uh, Susan Davis is missing, and her mother thinks that Mr. Mulder took her. Well, listen, Marty, you keep her quiet. I'll call the police. If she gets hysterical, give her one of those yellow capsules in the medicine cabinet. No, forget the capsules. Just keep talking to her. I'll call you when I hear something. Okay, bye. Mueller made off with the neighbor's kid. What do you mean, made off? Made off, vanished, took her, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Why, Mr. Mueller? I find this just a little bit tiring. Want me to swing you? Let's just go and see the animals. He won't do anything to her, will he, Steve? I don't know. I don't think so. How can I tell? Mrs. Davies, this is Mr. Muller's daughter. I'm so sorry. I never thought he'd do a thing like this. My husband kept telling me, but I couldn't believe him. I'm so sorry. If he does anything to that kid, it'll blow our inquest. Oh, she's not gonna hurt you. See? See? It's a snake. What? Her, her nose is a snake. You must say that. 
you'll hurt her feelings. Yes, you will. They're very smart. They understand everything. Just like you. Ah. Hello. Yes? Thanks, I'll tell her. Who was it? The police. They haven't found her yet. Look, you're all jumping the gun. Let's be fair to the old man. He's probably taking her for a walk or something. Who cares about being fair? I want my baby back. God made the flowers and the trees and people and everything. I see. And what scientific evidence does your mother have for making such an assumption? What? I mean, what proof does your mother have that Uncle Friendly is responsible for all this beauty? Who's Uncle Friendly? Oh, look! It ate it up. I see. Susie, have you ever seen a lemon tree? Susie. Susie. He's gone. Well, that's good. I wanted to give him to the plant. Why? So that the plant could eat him up. Susie. Go home. Are you mad at me? No. What then? Why are you going away? Here, have some coffee. <gasps> Steve. Can't you give her something? Does she have to suffer like this? Where is Mr. Mueller? I don't know. He's mad at me. He wouldn't let me put the fire in the plant. What? We were at this place with all the flowers in the park, and there was this, this plant that ate flies. I wanted to put the fly in it, and Mr. Mueller got mad. Susie, where is Mr. Mueller now? She came home by herself, in a cab. Mr. Davis, you better get on the missing persons and tell them Susie's back. You coming or what? Sure. Let me go with you. Hello, Mr. Mueller. Mr. Mueller?
that you called me? Mr. Miller? Mr. Miller? Mr. Mueller's inquest, Steve. What's he talking about? Responsibility. 